Welcome back to the Peggy Smedley Show, the podcasting voice of IoT and digital transformation. Welcome to the Peggy Smedley Show, and I'm your host, Peggy Smedley. We are coming to you live from CES 2020, and I am joined by Dana Zalitsky. Did I say it right? You are the Vice President (laughs) of Marketing from Valance. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm excited to be here. I know you just said we were talking before the show went on that uh, you haven't had a chance to get out of your booth. You've been very busy, so that's a good sign, right? That means that things have been... Uh, very busy. What? Where's your booth located? Here in the North Hall. Our technology is is uh, addressing the automotive market, so we're in the smart vehicle hall. Okay, so great. I haven't seen your booth, so it must be further down this it's way. It's exactly on the opposite side of the hall. Oh, so that's <laughs> it. We know that part of the hall has been very busy, you know, kind of, yeah. which is great. So you've got some uh, some things here you're going to show. So I know that David exactly. can turn around there and kind of zoom in on that a little bit. So talk a little bit about the fabless semiconductor market, because I know that's where you guys are in the chipset a little bit. Talk a little bit about how that market's been and and where you see the growth, where it's been in the past and what you see the growth going forward a little bit. Okay, so uh, as you said, Valence is a fabulous semiconductor company. It means that our products are merely chipsets and uh, this is how they look like. Um, But there's a lot of technology going on inside, a lot of uh, uh, very sophisticated algorithm going on inside. Um, And these will go uh, into uh, different kind of devices. Uh, Valence has been around for uh, over 12 years and we started uh, in the audio video market, consumer electronics market. Um, So basically you can find our chipsets in uh, uh, products like projectors and displays and video distribution products uh, from all the leading consumer electronics uh, manufacturers. Um, Our technology inside uh, enables very high speed data and video uh, communication uh, with a very uh, strong and resilient PHI. Um, so this is something that we did for the audio video product and we are now doing it for the automotive market, particularly for in-car connectivity, all the connectivity that is going on inside the car. So this is something that is being enabled by our products and in general you asked about the semiconductor uh, market, I think uh, in the last years with the uh, increased interest in the automotive market, uh, semiconductors have become uh, strong enablers to the to the development, to the very high development in this market. There's a lot of similarity in the two markets, right? Uh, how would you assess that in your own way? Well, I think from our perspective, the similarity is mostly in the need. In both markets, okay. there is the same need to transmit very high speed uh, video and data with low latency uh, over a very simple, resilient, long-reach infrastructure. And this is exactly what our technology does. Are there a lot of challenges in your mind, I I would say, between what are in in in-vehicle connectivity that exists today and even yesterday and what even going forward? Yes, (laughs) a lot of challenges. Um, w- when, you, when we look on the development of car architectures throughout the year, uh, what has happened is that every time a new feature was added uh, uh, to the cars, and we know that a lot of features have been added to the cars, new devices, new systems, new cables have been added, and uh, it wasn't done in a scalable manner. So we feel, and I think the entire industry feels the same, is that the car architecture has reached a breaking point. Uh, and uh, really reached its limit on the way uh, to autonomous cars. Uh, so there is a clear understanding in the market that uh, that there's a, that there's a need for a, for a change uh, and for a new approach, uh, mainly because the car architectures are so complex. There's also a problem uh, with the wire harness. What is the wire harness? Uh, wire harness is all the cables and connectors that are spread uh, inside the car. Uh, and we are literally out of physical space to add more uh, cables and connectors and devices into the car. And I can give you some numbers. Yeah, because absolutely. Because most people are really not aware of it because we walk into a car, we don't know what's going on beneath the seats and uh, behind the doors. But uh, actually today the wire harness is the third heaviest element within the car. It weighs approximately 60 kilograms and the accumulated length of all these cables can reach five kilometers. And this is today in an average car. Um, 
we're not talking about the future, we're not talking about autonomous car. Uh, so there's a clear need uh, to change the way we do things, uh, to have a centralized architecture, and uh, to converge, to converge systems, to converge cables, to converge everything uh, uh, inside the car. Are we getting successful at that? I mean, I think that's, you guys look at yourselves differently, I think, than some of the other competitors, which we'll talk about, but do you think that that's an area that you want to have an impact on? For sure, this is an area uh, we want to have an impact on, and I think this is the reason that we have a valid case in the automotive market. Um, I think uh, we're making progress, uh, mainly because of, of the awareness to the problem and the understanding in the entire industry from the car manufacturers and the tier ones and the suppliers, uh, the understanding that we cannot go on like this. Uh, the reason that our technology is such a good fit for this challenge is uh, because one of the key features in our technology is convergence. What does, what does it mean? It means that with this chipset, we are able to aggregate many interfaces on the same link. And by that, by that, we reduce significantly the number of links in, in, in the car, the number of connectors, the number of cables, the number of devices, the cost, obviously, and, and, and so on. And then and also the number of things that possibly they can go wrong every time you're doing that, right? We think about all of that, you know, in a car and the headaches there. Talk about alliances. I mean, in, in order for the car and the automotive industry to work, there has to be a lot of partnerships and belonging to alliances. And the car industry has always been a part of that. How important has that been for you guys to be a part of and to continue to grow alliances? I think yeah. you're a part of one already. Yes, so uh, that's a great question because alliances and standards has been a key value for, for Valence from the beginning, even when we were a very small company. Uh, back in the audio video uh, business, uh, which is still going on and very successful for Valence, uh, we formed uh, an alliance that is called HD Based Alliance. The alliance is, uh, uh, the HD Based is the name of our technology for the audio video market. Uh, we formed this alliance together with uh, Samsung, LG, and Sony with the idea that for a connectivity technology, if it is not a standard, it will not be uh, a huge success in the market. It may have lim limited business here and there, but if, the if we want our technology to be the dominating technology in the market, it has to be a standard. Uh, so we did it very, very successfully in the audio-video market. Uh, HD Based Alliance has today over 200 member companies that are our customers and our members of this alliance all work with the same standard and our technology is by all means the de facto connectivity standard in that market. In the automotive market, we want to do the same because we understand that in this market it is, it is even more important uh, to have uh, uh, the same uh, connectivity infrastructure. Uh, we understand it is important for the car manufacturers uh, uh, and it will be for the benefit of the industry. So we are working very uh, uh, intensely with the standard organization in this market uh, and we've had some uh, major successes. Uh, the automotive industry, though, for has you know, there's a lot of different, you know, the a lot of egos in the automotive industry. I'll say you don't have to. Everyone, but, everyone has egos, right? Yeah, <laughs> it, it's kind of tough to get them to kind of agree on things when it's changing. In some ways, they've been slow to adopt things, and now all of a sudden, they recognize technology is moving very fast. But to change in the automotive industry has been difficult. And now they realize the way they've done things they can't do, and now they've got to partner with tech companies. Are you finding to get them to kind of move is now they have to be a mobility company right. versus them being an automotive company. Has that now, getting them to understand the standard side thing is also somewhat challenging in some ways? Actually, the standard is, uh, is not very challenging from their perspective from their perspective, going for a standard solution is the safe way. But you're absolutely right. Uh, in, in, in the past, the automotive market has been very traditional. It, it was very uh, difficult to penetrate for new technology vendors like ourselves into this market. But it's really changed in the past five years or so. I think thanks to new car manufacturers like uh, Google or Tesla and others that have kind of changed things. The true tech companies coming in, be becoming automotive type right, companies. Right, right. So okay. it kind of changed things and maybe gave uh, the traditional car manufacturers an incentive to open more for change. And 
we feel today that uh, uh, the industry is so open to new technologies. They understand that they have to be leaders in this race because there is a race uh, uh, in this market. Uh, so they're very, very open for new technologies. In fact, Valence is uh, an Israeli-based uh, company. We're based out of Israel. And in the past, we used to say that Israel is startup nation. Today, we call Israel transportation nation because the number of uh, auto tech companies or auto tech new startups in Israel is incredible and uh, all the car manufacturers are looking at companies from Israel uh, uh, and are open to receive new technologies uh, here and even if you walk the halls here every uh, second or third booth is an Israeli company because we're making such uh, amazing impact in, in this market. Is, is that because a lot of what happens is mostly what goes into the car and that idea of, of changing the way technology is versus not necessarily being one of the top five big automakers, but the technology that drives the, the, the connectivity of that car. I mean, and it's changing that mindset, you know, and, and that's the way automotive companies have to think. It's the technology of what the consumer wants to see and the experience in that car now, and that's what you're talking about. Yes. And that's the thing that I think automotive companies have to see is that it's that experience and all the technology that makes that experience right. happen. Right, I think actually maybe uh, in the past, uh, most of the innovation in the car industry was in the user experience. But today everyone is talking autonomous and in order to reach that, that mm -hmm. goal, uh, the innovation has to come from technology. There's no other way. And, and it's interesting because we've been talking about when do we get to autonomous vehicles. We've been saying 2030, 2050, whatever those years might be, level five. Mm -hmm. And now, because consumers want it faster and faster and faster, but we have to think about safety. But then we have to think about how do you build the infrastructure? How do you build all of these roads going from city to city, state to state? In order to do that, it takes some time. But it seems like the speed is moving faster than we thought. Right. And are we going to get there maybe sooner than we originally anticipated when we first started talking about autonomous vehicles? I don't think we're, we're, we're going to get there sooner than, than anticipated, maybe even later than anticipated, <laughs> but, but it doesn't matter. It's really for, for the best of, uh, of the industry and for, for our, all of our safety. Um, uh, I think we, you will have level, th level 3, level 4 uh, uh, autonomy before you, you reach to full autonomy and the technology is out there. You just need to, to, to make it uh, uh, safe and reliable. So what can we expect about balanced chipsets in cars? Yeah, so uh, a lot. <laughs> uh, we are showing here at the show uh, three of our product families. Each product family is addressing a different uh, use case uh, uh, within the car, whether it is uh, for uh, infotainment, telematics, uh, or ADAS applications. Uh, we've announced uh, two new partnerships uh, in the show, one uh, with Aptive, which is one of the leading tier ones in, in this market, uh, one with uh, Micron, uh, uh, based on, on, on our chipsets. Uh, so uh, looking forward, there's a lot going on and uh, I think uh, for uh, our vision is to be the connectivity of choice for any high speed in vehicle application. So where can our viewers go to learn more about what you guys are doing? What's your URL? Uh, www.valance.com well, I've really enjoyed spending time with you, Dana. Thank you Same so here. much. Thank it's you so been much for having me. All right, well, that's all the time we have for today. Dana Zielinski, thank you so much. She's the VP of Marketing of Valens, so you just heard her URL, you can go up there. But most importantly, tweet at us at ConnectedWMag. As always, this is the Peggy Smedley Show coming to you live from CES 2020. If you've got something to say or you want us to learn more about what things you want to hear, here coming out live from the show floor, send us a tweet at ConnectedWMag. This is the Peggy Smedley Show, the podcasting voice of IoT and digital transformation. Remember, with great technology comes great responsibility. We'll be right back after this short break. <laughs>